Do you wonder how trailblazing leaders sense at scale, innovate with involvement, and align actions in an increasingly digital world? Welcome to the Exploring Leaders podcast. Hosted by the experienced team at Degotion, we dive into leadership topics and interview inspiring leaders from around the globe. With empirical and science-based perspectives, as well as AI-driven insights, we explore what it takes to lead effectively in the digital age, unlocking ideas and strategies that will shape the future of leadership. In this episode, Degotian founder Lizalette Engstam, who is also an independent board chair and director, researcher, advisor, and coach, directs the episode. Phenomenal. This is going to be a great discussion. Really looking forward. We both work as board directors, but we also are devoting quite a lot of time to research once and teach boards different things and just facilitate board networks. Which aspect of this do you find interesting? Thank you so much for those questions. I really like that you use the word facilitating. And I, I think it's really important when we are talking about bringing, um, <laughs> just like in a board, it's not an, an individual work, it's a teamwork. So facilitation, I think it's really key. So both facilitating what happens within the boardroom, but also facilitating what is board work outside of the boardroom. And I think that that's something that you and I have been really looking a lot into, what it is to be a board director when you're not in, inside the board not just in the meeting, what else do you do outside? Well, what are your, how, how do you pay attention to the world? How you gather insights, how you explore topics. And at least it's something that you, you yourself keep talking about, right? Well, yeah. yeah, and I think it's absolutely right. And we even see now from research that board members spend a lot of their time outside of the boardroom. Uh, part of it is just to look for things and, and data for themselves, but part of it is also interacting with other board members uh, of their boards or of other boards. So the entire board work is not just defined to the meeting. That's true. No, no exactly. Yeah. And very much this ecosystem perspective mm. of it. Right. So it's the, it's working in the board, facilitating the training, the bringing people together to share their experiences. And one of the things that I absolutely really, really love, uh, give me your, give me your insights about it mm. is, is this little peer exchanges that we yeah. create that people go together and, you know, sometimes maybe it's a bit awkward that you're mm. talking to people that you've never met before, but the magic of, oh, you also have that problem. Oh, we, we've done it this way. Oh, how did you do yeah. it? How, yeah. Oh, we also have operations in that mm. same geographical right. location. Or Whereas we actually had this morning. No, I don't struggle in that area, but I struggle in this area. Mm. And then we can have a more holistic discussion on how do the different areas impact each other. Mm. Exactly. I, think it's, I think it's really interesting. What are the most common knowledge gaps? Why do people actually need to have training and have to... Pick more insights at all. What are the knowledge gaps? Well, I think you know, but <laughs> just <laughs> to make it really clear, um, I think that there's fundamental gaps when it comes to innovation management. And there's, of course, a lot of discussion until what extent innovation mm -hmm. is part of the role of the board or right. it's, it's the board's role to go into the nitty gritty of um, managing innovation. And I don't think it's about the nitty gritty of managing innovation, but really supporting the capabilities mm. in the organization to manage, you know, manage mm. innovation. So what I see over and over again, and this is not just SMEs or even team players, mm. you still do innovation in a way that it's very much um, based in randomness. Maybe you have good people, maybe you have a good idea, but the, the fundamental building that muscle in the organization mm -hmm. to deal with innovation, I think it's missing. And, and I think that one of the reasons it's missing, it's because boards have not 
uh, really looked at guiding the capabilities when it comes to innovation. Right. And then it includes innovation within AI, within sustainability, uh, et cetera, within future thinking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I consider to be a discipline related to innovation management. Um, for me, the, 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 the lack of these capabilities is really, is really core. Mm -hmm. What do you think? For so, you, so what I, are your gaps? Yeah, so I think I'm kind of coming at it slightly differently. I think most people who end up on boards, they're super smart and yeah. they're very Thank good, you. right? Thank you. Um, and I think previously you could build very much on that position that you had all of this knowledge and you still can. I mean, that's basically why you have it. But now the need to actually take in new areas has dramatically changed. Uh, and mainly because of the pace and the number of changes going on. So I think that has changed. And I also think the entire kind of board work has changed to be more of the guiding uh, and not just the controlling part of what you're trying to do. You have to find a balance. Of course, you should treat, still be in your supervision side, but you also have to find balance in that. So I think that is kind of where I see that it's yeah. some of the gaps yeah. comes from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now we're, we're working in a couple of different settings when we're facilitating and meeting boards. What kind of engagement strategies have you found that you say uh, is more, most interesting and actually attracts board members to, to join these things? I think that exactly like you said, these are really smart people. They got there because they have proven their value in, in many different settings. So I think it's very important to, um, and going back to the word facilitating, that it's not about um, teaching board directors on how to do things, but facilitating this discussion so that they themselves, because th again, these are smart people, they don't need to be told what to do, but maybe have the opportunity to have a forum, a place for discussion, mm -hmm. for um, reflection and, and, and for inspiration. Uh, so, so to facilitate that discussion mm -hmm. so that they can really reflect, okay, what does this mean for me mm -hmm. and my current board mandates or in the board mandates that I mm -hmm. want to have in the future? Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I think it's it's really really important, and the, our whole structure of, in terms of uh, what we do in terms of board's impact training, etc., mm. is is also based on real experiences, right? Right. To be based on um, mm. this is not just mm. theory. Theory, yes. Research, mm. yes. We do research, so God bless research. We like research. We are not against that but also very much anchored in yeah. the practice in what works or not and what's relevant. I, I think that's a very good point. I think the mixture of bringing in academic research gives a bit of a uh, comfort, mm. but then to actually think about how do you apply this? Uh, yes. Because it's every topic, if you t take them separately, there's... You can almost say there's a no-brainer on every topic, but it's the magic when you're trying to bring everything together and you're very trying to make a sense out of it. That's where the challenge comes. Absolutely. So we've been doing this even together over the last three, four years now. And, and how do you see our kind of curriculum? How has our different topic areas changed? Mm -hmm. And, and then you can think about that we've done this, you know, via Degosia, we've done it at Boards Impact Forum, INSEAD, we've done it in a number of yeah, different Yeah, then it's even it. more than three, four years. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite a bit more than that. Um, I think that, um, how I see it at least, that for myself, I really found this sustainability and AI as the red threats kind oh. of connecting the different elements. I was just talking to an old colleague last week um, from the uh, from the Stockholm Resilience Center, and I was trying to explain what we do. Oh. And then 
how I explained that was really that we kind of used the disruption as an umbrella right. and then seeing both sustainability mm -hmm. and AI as part of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is happening in the world right now. Unprecedented challenges related to different topics. Let's look into sustainability and AI right. and rather try to strengthen each other out instead of being, oh no, one more huge challenge. Yeah. But okay, let's let's try to deal with them together. So I think that the, the curriculum or mm -hmm. at least how I'm how I see mm -hmm. what we do mm -hmm. has been more and more into okay disruption as an umbrella and try to use this diversity of events to drive change mm -hmm. in a way that is uh, coordinated and um, and uh, built help each other out right so i also think it's very interesting if we think back just on the uh, meeting we had this morning on all of the certified board directors and, we, and and there we have people who are sitting on mining boards uh, financial services boards consumer retail boards actually sitting on all different and they had a lot to share with each other um, because even if the transition is obviously quite different in mining compared to financial services, they still have a lot in the linkage with the board work to share. I completely agree. And there, and there was someone that was sharing mm. something about, oh, the importance of being sector specific and, and the mm. sector expertise, which of course I completely agree. Mm. But I do think that there's a lot of opportunities that we haven't really met yet, mm. exactly in what you're saying. Mm. And, and and also seeing how other sectors are doing it and learning with each other, and and that can definitely be done at board level also. Right, right. So we had a lot of exciting events uh, over the last three four years. Which one do you remember? <laughs> I hope I remember all of them, one way or another. So pick out some and and, and think about what happened there. Um, I think that there's, there's persons that I've, uh, thought were really, really important. So I'm cheap because I actually took out uh, some of the, uh, <laughs> lists from events that we have had, maybe not all of them, but at least mm -hmm. some of them, these are not the ones in physics, these are the ones we've had on the net that we also could record, yes. um, but I'm thinking back for you know, the number of first ones we had, these mm. all across the world, we actually found a way to talk about what was specific to Nordic governance. Uh, and based on that, I think we created not just an interest in the Nordic, but actually an international interest yeah. for what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, uh, this here mm. is to such a great extent your power to attract, to attract people. People want to participate in our events and they want to share and because they see also it, 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 as, as anything, any project, the project can be great, but it's like a startup, right? Right. Maybe the business idea is okay, it's good, but you really look into mm. the founding theme. Mm -hmm. And I think to a great extent, you are that person that can really attract all this talent mm. to, you know. To come and contribute. Yeah, come and think, contribute I think we did publicly, that. Yeah. I don't think it's just me. I think we actually, when we put the ground with our strategic advisory board, with our board, that was they have work. all contributed and keep contributing, keep joining mm -hmm. our events. And I think they're doing it because partly yeah. they want to give back, but they also want to learn. They also want to pick up things from this. So I think that is really fantastic. I'm thinking on, you know, also several of them we've done with other chapters. I'm thinking here we did with uh, the German chapter with the Norwegian Investment Bank, with the chair of the uh, Hong Kong Exchange. Fantastic really, really discussions. I, I, I really love uh, to listen to Jane, for example, right, so inspiring. Yeah, and she 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 brings a very different perspective. Also, 
which is word perspective, but but also from a very kind of uh, passionate uh, yeah. and perspective. And they agree. And it's so Interesting. It's, yeah. I remember one of her first charts where she had one chart which was full with flowers and all, <laughs> almost <laughs> smelling. And then she had the other chart. This is what, where we were when we were communicating. And this is where we're going. And it's a bit more order in what we're communicating. I really, I mean, she explained yeah. that in a wonderful way, just with those two charts. Mm. That, that was really mm -hmm. fun. We've also had some fantastic mm -hmm. events together mm -hmm. with the INSEAD corporate governor. Yes. Uh, I mean, amazing events. And thinking that this autumn we will run for the third yeah. time to actually do an ESG pulse check for books. It's a great event, really. That we um, again we have really bring this global perspective, mm. and then kind of also have this Nordic flavor to it. Right, right, and and uh, all of these uh, linkages and uh, looking after Henrik Henriksson and Elaine and their amazing book. I still think about that talk quite often. Yeah. I still find myself going back to oh yeah, what were. Yeah. It's really interesting because I think that all events are extremely high quality and mm. you see that people are contributing and mm. not to even speak about the uh, breakout room discussions. But of course, there's always some events that you kind of retain a bit more yeah. than, uh, than others. And, and now we have run uh, also over the last year some amazing event uh, on boards and AI and boards and AI and sustainability and, and trying to keep that together. Uh, and I find it really good when we have these very se senior NEDs sharing their experiences uh, on, on how they are looking at the topic. Uh, but I found also we run one of these events <clears throat> with Thomas Syrian and, and, and he was actually going through all of these examples and it was like showing a little candy store. <laughs> <What> <laughs> exactly, and potential, yeah. exactly, potential <laughs> things to happen. One thing that I think is very mm. funny, which is um, when uh, looking for videos mm. about uh, AI and uh, governance and boards and also material to use in other contexts mm. or in training, mm -hmm. etc. Um, and it doesn't matter how much I turn on the VPN or I try to hide my identity <laughs> or something. It doesn't matter how much I do it. Yeah. When I Google it, our videos always come, which yeah. is really interesting because, because on one hand, of mm. course, I'm happy and proud yeah. that if people that are looking into this, they come and they see the work mm. that we have been doing. But on another, on another aspect another part of me feels a bit okay but we should be doing more of this not yeah. only us and mm -hmm. i'm not saying that not more people are doing there's a lot of people looking into this intersection of sustainability and ai and, and governance yeah. i just think that somehow there should be much more i think yeah. that this to needs be to find yeah yeah exactly so so that we would create bigger critical mass mm -hmm. around these topics. I think it's very true. I also enjoy, mm -hmm. you know, we have also done events totally together with some of our board network partners, yep. Directors Institute in Finland. We've done it with Boardman. We've done it with Scandinavian Executive Institute. We've done it with students. We've done it with mm -hmm. a lot of the uh, board networks. Um, and that also gives them an opportunity to uh, to build laterally yeah. learn themselves and get an integrated discussion with their members. I think that has also been really interesting. Absolutely. Again, going back to that ecosystem idea yeah. of trying to to build different uh, elements and engage different yeah. actors yeah. to come together. Uh, so do you have any success stories that somebody told you something that they have been using or? Well, especially after the trainings, mm. especially after the so trainings. Maybe we should just mention which trainings we exactly. specifically have right now. So um, 
we we uh, we can also tell a little bit the the insane story of <laughs> okay let's do a trading yes <laughs> let's do it um we started with uh, uh, the what we call the sustainability training which is board's governance of uh, sustainability for value creation so yeah. always bringing this value creation aspect yeah. uh, and that is also something that maybe we can just put a little bit of uh, focus on which is this idea that if you don't bring value to the business it's very difficult to drive this transformation right so sustainability coupled with value creation and then we also um, building on that success story and building on the success story of uh, that book that we've uh, published together with uh, Robin Tengland, we also created um, words oversight of responsible AI mm. for value creation. Mm. And uh, actually in both these training programs, participants or directors mm. uh, coming to me on personal messages you know, this is really helpful. I'm going to be using it mm -hmm. and this this particular tool or uh, this particular aspect of the training. Mm -hmm. or, and that is super, super rewarding. Yeah. And and so it's not something that happens once. Okay, now now we've done that. It's, it's done. But that's, you, it's really this community right. building and driving transformation. Yeah. From, uh, from within organizations. Right. Then it's, it's the interesting thing. It's, it's both kind of what the company examples with the company, but it's also examples with what they're doing at board level. So how do they introduce topics? I mean, we got fantastic feedback when we did, dared to run this uh, event with three chairs from three different uh, uh, countries on psychological safety and had a lot of fun discussions also in that uh, webinar. And so many people kind of coming back to say, I need to step up myself. I, um, I need to find a way to introduce it in a bit more uh, faced manner. A lot of the good things that was actually brought up. Absolutely. And then we were also invited to share that success story with the, with the Pope of uh, Climate Governance Initiative Network. That was also that right. an inspiring moment, okay, for other chapters in other parts of yeah. the globe, uh, which also generated some interest. I think it's, it's actually super interesting to have this conversation and just going through everything that we've done because it's huge. It is huge. Since we are running it, yeah. we don't really take the time for reflection and really, but Looking back, and we're not talking about work being done over 10 years, or we're talking about things that are happening this year, last yes. year. So, so very, very um, dynamic context. Right. <laughs> and I think also just the comfort for board members to come together and actually feel that everybody's disrupted uh, yeah, and just have this conversation on what do I do? Uh, and how do I try to keep my focus on the horizon uh, discussion? Where will this lead us? What are some of the things that we're seeing that might be something we should consider bringing in as training or approaches or so? That's a very good question. So one thing that is right now on the table is is this idea that we've had for long and now with the team building, uh, the team growing, having uh, Elving helping out with the communication and, and Jim helping out with the operations and to, to start uh, a couple of things. First, um, showing ourselves to the rest of society. Okay, we are working with boards oh. and board directors and we are quite strict about that so on who can attend right. our events which is also something interesting it's not just inspiring food for thought but we really want people with board mandates mm -hmm. so this is a safe environment so okay we we we, we have been working working with a somewhat mm. small group mm. and i think that the, the next step is to show the world what we are doing mm. so uh, in this context, this collaboration with the city of uh, Helsingborg and being uh, a co-organizer uh, of the uh, uh, Impact Innovation Summits taking place there in Helsingborg. It's just an example mm -hmm. of how we can 
show to society, mm. um, not only private sector, but public sector, et cetera, that, okay, mm. we are doing this work and, and, and we are open to, to collaborate and we are looking for partners. Mm. And so to have a bit more of maybe public facing uh, side. And then the, the interest that uh, I'm very happy to see that has been generated around uh, new training, um, right, namely right. things like um, future thinking for boards, mm. which is uh, an idea that we, we have been discussing for long, but it's slowly starting to take more shape. Yeah. And it's also a really important part of the process, right? We have this idea. We talk to board uh, directors, mm. is this relevant or not? Mm. How do you use it? So, so that it comes from a place of uh, knowledge and experience right. and, and not just trying to, to guess what's needed. Yeah. So I think that's uh, becoming a bit more public facing mm -hmm. even to, to show that we exist, mm. um, to keep developing on the, um, on the training programs, uh, keep working on the research, which is also right. something that so now that I listen to myself, okay, well, what are the main focus areas moving forward? Well, everything. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it. But what do you think? Yeah. What are your... Well, I think one of the areas that we should, we should be in probably one of the better uh, chapters in this in the chapter group that we also belong to with World Economic Forum and Climate Governance Initiative. I think we should continue to do things and maybe even more things together with other chapters, uh, because we're creating a lot of things that uh, we can do. But we also know that a lot of the board directors in Nordic are very interested in getting connected to board directors internationally. Uh, okay. So I think that is is very nice. Um, if we um, uh, kind of look into uh, uh, this. Uh, conclude with this thing around uh, trying to have impact. Uh, where do you see that we have impact, and where do you feel that you have impact? That's a, that's a really really good question. Um, I think that working with uh, boards uh, has this kind of. Uh, multiplying effect mm. right so it's this idea that by working with one person or trying to change one person that that can really have repercussions right. in a bigger right. group and so that that is something that is really interesting because the board and we've we have been talking about this so often board directors can be great facilitators or bottlenecks yeah. for this uh, for this transformation so, and, and what I have seen, and that the more I talk to different uh, actors, different people, etc., I think there has been uh, somewhat interest in working with uh, board directors when it comes to driving the sustainability agenda. Mm -hmm. But it has, and it is traditionally a group that is somewhat hard to reach so a lot of organizations don't really know how, how even where to start mm. right and um the fact that that we have this organization and then it, and that's up and running and that we are looking for partners and i think it can really amplify yeah. this impact that we are that we are trying to build yeah. so if we can really have a, an, an interesting group of partners mm. that support and facilitate the work that we are doing, but also help us to, well, do it even more, to, yes. to have it more often, to, well, to, to grow, to, to yeah. then I think this, this impact that I feel we are, we are, we are doing and we are being successful mm. at, mm. we can really amplify it even further. Right. I think one of the things that we have started doing <clears throat> really good, and I think we need to continue to do, board work is not the one topic. Board mm. work is to look at where is this company, what are all of the trends happening, trying to sort out what's the good strategy and where's the multiple areas that this company can go towards. And I think that 
many times as board members were being trained in separate topics. But I think one of the things that is most important is to show um, ourselves uh, and in our boards how are things connected. Yeah. And, and, and doing these things here, how does this impact something over here? I think that is something that um, I find interesting. It takes some time to discuss in boardrooms, but it's really important. Uh, and I think we've started to do that, and, and I think we can continue to do that even more. Absolutely, and it's where frameworks like sensing, pivoting, aligning really help and giving a bit of a framework around that which is a piece of research that we've published also. So uh, to support board directors in this, uh, in this, in these discussions, right? Thank you so much, Fernanda. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for this opportunity. Also, yeah, I think yes. so, looking back on things we've actually been through, I think we should be very proud together with all of our Strategic advisory board and advisory boards. Everyone that has made this possible. And climate governance and World Economic Forum. That is actually also facilitating us with content and insight so we can hear you putting things in perspective. A great journey. A great journey. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Exploring Leaders, a podcast produced by Degotion with the ambition to inspire insightful leadership in the digital age. If you found this episode interesting, join the momentum to amplify the voices of trailblazing leaders by sharing it with others for inspiration. For any questions or recommendations you'd like to listen to, contact us via our website, degotion.com, or via social media as LinkedIn or Twitter.